Hello, Alvaro here. Welcome to another paneling tutorial. Today, we are going to learn about an algorithm known as the Variational Quantum Eigensolver, or VQE for short. It's an algorithm that has many applications, and today we're going to code it in paneling in order to calculate the ground energy of a molecule. To understand VQE, we first need to remember what an observable is in quantum mechanics. In quantum mechanics, every variable is associated to a certain observable, which is usually represented by a matrix. The eigenvalues of this matrix tell us what possible values the variable can take when we measure it in an experiment. One of the most important observables in physics is the Hamiltonian. The Hamiltonian is associated to the energy, which means that the eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian tells us what possible values of the energy we can measure in that system. So for example, for a hydrogen atom, the eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian are minus 13.6 electron volts, minus 3.4 electron volts, minus 1.5 electron volts, and others. What we observe in this case, and actually in all physically relevant cases, is that the Hamiltonian has a lowest eigenvalue. That is, physical systems have a lowest possible energy, which is known as the ground energy. So if the eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian represent the possible values of the energy, what are the eigenvectors? The eigenvectors are states of the quantum system. If a quantum system is in one of these eigenvectors, or energy eigenstates, then if it's associated to the eigenvalue E, then always when I measure the energy of this energy eigenstate, I will get the value E. If the system is not in one of these energy eigenstates, I will get some probabilistic measurement outcomes, as is usual in quantum mechanics. So what is VQE? VQE is an algorithm that allows us to find the ground energy of a Hamiltonian, as well as its associated energy eigenstate, which is also known as the ground state. But why do I care about finding the ground state of a molecule, for example? In quantum chemistry, this is important because a lot of quantities of interest, such as reaction rates, actually reduce to calculating ground states of molecules. VQE is also useful in areas outside quantum chemistry. For example, portfolio optimization problems in finance can be formulated in terms of Hamiltonians, and the optimal portfolio can be found using VQE as well. Today, we will focus on quantum chemistry applications of VQE. In particular, we are going to use it to find the ground state of an H3 molecule. We will do this by following three steps. The first one is to calculate what the Hamiltonian for the H3 molecule is. The second is to prepare a candidate ground state using an educated guess. In physics, that is known as an ansatz. The third one is by running through all of our guesses, we will minimize the expectation value of the Hamiltonian. The state that minimizes this expectation value turns out to be the ground state. Step one, finding the molecular Hamiltonian. So to start with, we're going to import the usual libraries. So we import penilane as QML as usual. And then from penilane, we import NumPy as NP. We're going to be doing a quantum chemistry example. So we will need the quantum chemistry library. So from penilane, we import QChem. Then we need to define what molecule we're going to be working with. So in order to do this, we put in an array called symbols, each of the symbols of the atoms that make up our molecule. So in this case, just three H's. And we also need to specify where these nuclei of hydrogen are located. That is, we need to specify the geometry of the molecule. This is done by creating a NumPy array named coordinates. And what are the coordinates? Well, we already know what they are from a database, or you can also calculate it from the Hartree-Fock approximation. We're just going to take them as given and we're gonna take that these are good enough for our purposes, even though they are an approximation. Here they are, shift enter, and we have defined the geometry of our molecule. Now, in order to define our molecular Hamiltonian, we need the QChem library. So to do that, we just write Hamiltonian, comma qubits, because this command is also gonna calculate the number of qubits that we need for our model, and we do QChem, dot molecular underscore Hamiltonian 
and we need to give it both the symbols and the coordinates that we defined before. Now, in VQE, it's easier to work with two electrons than it is to work with the three electrons that a neutral molecule of H3 has. So let's cheat a bit and make this actually an H3 ion. So for that, we specify that the charge is going to be positive one. So we've removed one electron and we have two electrons. If we print out qubits, we will see that we actually need six qubits to model our molecule. Now we can define an approximate ground state known as the Hartree-Fox state. This will be a first approximation to our ground state, but is not really the ground state. So we do this by defining HF is equal to QChem dot HF state for Hartree-Fox state. And now we know that we have two electrons because it was a positive ion of H3. And we know that we need six qubits, so let's do orbitals equals two, six. Press enter, and if we print what HF is, it is this state in the Jordan Wigner representation. To learn more about the Jordan Wigner representation, please watch our video on Introduction to Quantum Chemistry. In that video, we also saw how to build a small circuit that would calculate the expectation value of one of these Hartree-Fox states. So let's do this again very quickly. So the number of wires in our circuit is equal to the number of qubits that we need. So it will be equal to six. And we also need to define our device that we're gonna call that. So qml.device, and it will be again a simple default qubit device, which will have num wires, so six wires, and press enter. Now, the circuit that we used that time is this one, so let's simply define it again. Now let's see what we get if we act with this circuit on the Hartree-Fock state. We get an energy of minus 1.24. What we will see is that this is really not the ground energy, so it is not the ground state. We can find a state that has a lower energy than this. Step two, preparing the trial ground state. To understand this second step, we first need to introduce the double excitation gate. The double excitation gate takes one parameter theta and it takes four qubits. If the four input qubits are one, one, zero, and zero, then what this gate will do is take it into a superposition of itself with a prefactor of cosine theta halves and zero zero one one with a prefactor of sine theta halves. If we take to be these wires where the purple gates are as the lower energy levels and these wires where the green gates are as the higher energy levels, then basically what this gate is doing is taking the lower energy electrons into a superposition with themselves and the higher levels. This is not the only thing that this gate does, it also de-excites. So if the initial state was 0, 0, 1, 1, it would take it to cosine theta halves zero zero one one plus sine theta halves one one zero zero so let's go to our h3 which state should we choose as our candidate for the ground state remember that we are working with six qubits so it should be a superposition between the hartree fox state the state with two electrons in the second energy level 
and the state with two electrons in the highest energy level. But why did we choose this ansatz? The reason is that in the Hartree-Fock approximation, we neglect some interactions between electrons. These interactions that we neglect are strongest when the electrons are in the same molecular energy level. For this reason, this ansatz accounts for the error made in the Hartree-Fock approximation. This is also the reason why we chose to have two electrons, because the ansatz would actually be easier to construct this way. Here is the circuit that allows us to form this arbitrary superposition between the Hartree-Fock state and these excited states. If the initial state is the Hartree-Fock state, so 1, 1, and the rest zeros, can you tell me what will be the output state after going through this circuit? Take a minute to figure it out. If your answer is what is appearing on the screen right now, you've got it. You've learned how to act with double excitation gates. Take a look that this is indeed an arbitrary superposition of these states with real coefficients. So with this knowledge of the double excitation gates, let's build a circuit that prepares the candidate ground state. We're going to call this circuit the ansatz. So def ansatz of some list of parameter params which are going to be the parameters of the double excitation gates. The state that we're going to modify with the circuit is the Hartree-Fox state. So let's prepare it with QML.basis state. And this acts on all the wires. So wires is equal to range num wires. Now we have to act with the first double excitation gate. So QML.double excitation. And this has to take in the first element in the list params and act on wires 0, 1, 2, or 3. Because this is taking the electrons in the lowest energy level to the intermediate energy level. Then we act with double excitation again, this time with params 1. And this will take the electrons in the lowest energy level to the highest energy level that corresponds to the wires 4 and 5. So this is it. Press enter. And we have defined our ansatz. Step 3. Minimizing the expectation value of the Hamiltonian. So how do we actually find the ground state? We need to make use of a property known as the Ritz Variational Principle, which tells us that if I find the state that minimizes the expectation value of the Hamiltonian, then that state is the ground state. So let's build a circuit that returns the expectation value of the Hamiltonian, and that will be our cost function. So let's make this a Q node, because we are going to return an expectation value, and let's define cost function, which will depend on params. So the first thing that we need to do is prepare the candidate ground state. So we need to try among all the candidate ground states. And this ansatz depends on params. This is just the circuit that we defined before. And what we need to return is the expectation value of the Hamiltonian. So QML XVAL of Hamiltonian. Now let's see if we run what happens if we run this for a couple of parameters. So cost function of 0 0.1 comma 0 0.1. And as we see, we get an energy of minus 1.26, which is smaller than minus 1.24 for the Hartree-Fox state. Just by trying out something, we've already found a state that has a lower energy of what was supposed to be the ground state. So now we need to minimize the expectation value of the Hamiltonian. That is, we need to optimize our cost function circuit. In order to do this, we need to be familiar with some circuit optimization techniques. So take a look at our optimizing quantum circuits with paneling video for more information about this. Here I have basically the same code that Catalina used in that video, except that I will be storing the values in an energy and angle array. So the energy has 
the values of the expectation value of the energy as I go through different parameters for the double excitation gates. These parameters are stored in the array named angle. And then every two steps, I will be printing what the energy is. I already know that these will converge uh, in 20 steps more or less. So I have kind of cheated and just set the number of max iterations to 20. But in your case for a different molecule, it, it may take more steps. So let's run this and see what we get. And we see after 18 steps, it has converged to minus 1.27, which is much less than the minus 1.24 that we had guessed from the Hartree Fox state. Now we also write some print statements in order to see what the final value of the grand energy and the optimizing parameters are. So here are the print statements. So let's see what we get in the end. The final ground energy is minus 1.27 as we already knew, and the final angle parameters are 0 0.192 and 0 0.193 respectively. So now we can ask Penny Lane what the actual ground state is. So in order to do this, we can build a similar Q node to that of cost function, except that we return QML state. So it will look something like this, and we return QML state. And let's see what the state is for the optimized parameters theta. And we get something like this. If you are careful enough, you will see that this state corresponds to what I'm showing you on the screen right now. So that's it. We've used VQE to find the ground state of an H3 molecule. VQE has more applications than this, even within quantum chemistry. For example, we did assume what the equilibrium geometry of the molecule was, but in fact, you can also use it to find this equilibrium geometry. Check the tutorial down below to see how this is done. Do give us a thumbs up if you found this video useful and subscribe for more quantum computing videos. Thank you for watching.